it's Shara here today and I am going to be showing you how I made this fun Cinderella themed magic iris card. This video is a bit long but I wanted to show you the whole process including a couple of my mistakes so please feel free to fast forward through the parts that you don't feel you need to watch. I'm going to start off by making my background and doing my ink blending. I've cut the add-on for the magic iris die, the one that is the full panel, and I've cut the little tab that will cover up my tab, and I've just taped it to the back to hold them together while I do my ink blending. I'm going to be ink blending with Distress Oxide inks, and I'm starting out with Blueprint Sketch. You can see I actually pulled that tab off so that I can get the whole tab inked, and I will put it back on later when I add another color. But I'm starting off with Blueprint Sketch and I'm going over almost all of this with that color. This is going to be the majority of my background. You can see I'm leaving a white spot at the bottom. I'm going to go in with the Shaded Lilac Distress Oxide and put that in this area. I kind of wanted it to look like a glow on the ground below the pumpkin coach. And this Shaded Lilac really made that work. I'm going back and forth with the Shaded Lilac and the blueprint sketch just to kind of darken up the edges and blend them so they're nice and smooth and soft. Next I'm going in with Wilted Violet. I'm going to put that little tab back on so that my colors are consistent and I'm just going around the edges with the Wilted Violet. So this is kind of going to give it just a slight purple hue to the blue at the top. And then I'm going to finally go in with the chip sapphire. And I'm kind of going where the, the wilted violet was too. So it makes it darker, but also with that purple hue. So kind of the night sky sort of creeping in. Once I have my background as I like it, I'm going to put this piece of scrap cardstock to keep my little flecks of gold, my little starry sky off the ground. And you can see I have a couple big flecks there. I'm trying to get the one on the tab off. I'm just going to get it with my chamois that's a little wet. That's kind of going to get covered up with the gel and the glitter that we're going to add here. So I'm using the Bayou stencil and I'm just using the leaves. I did not do the vines on this one, just the leaves. And I'm going to use two glitter gels. So I'm starting off with this white glitter gel and I'm just doing the bottom of the leaves. And then once I've got that covered the way I want it, I'm going to use this new Stickles Glitter Gel, and this is Moon Dust. And it's not quite as white, it's more clear with some iridescent glitter in it. And I'm just putting that towards the top, and then I'm going to kind of pull it down and mix them all together. And you can see when I pull the stencil off, it has a really cool look with just being the leaves. Next I'm going to work on my pumpkin coach. So I'm using some of the new shimmer cardstock. This is the pastel pack. It's got this really pale blue in it. And I've cut the solid pumpkin as well as the pumpkin frame. Now I have this outside in stitch circle which is slightly smaller than the opening in my magic iris add-on. And I'm going to place it on that pumpkin and I'm using the frame just as a guide to get it centered. Then I'm going to slide that off. And I'm cutting a hole in that pumpkin. So we're going to see the magic iris through this hole. Then I can glue the two pieces together and have my coach started here. So you can see that that circle is a little bigger than that frame in the middle, but it kind of lets a stitching detail be on the outside of where that circle is, and it just kind of adds a little bit of detail. So I don't really mind it too much. If you don't want that stitching detail, I you could also use just a plain circle die. But this one was size perfect and I actually kind of like the extra little detail. I used some of the little swirly tendrils from the pumpkin set and the stem and I'm going to cut those from some gold glitter cardstock. And then I'm going to use this little frame from the Reveal Little Circle add-on set. It's perfectly sized to make the wheels of my carriage and I also like that it is nice and thin. So I'm going to cut two of those from the gold glitter cardstock as well. You can see that I have two of these swirls and I cut one from the back side so that they go in opposite directions. 
Now I can start to assemble my gold accents onto my pumpkin here. I'm going to put the stem at the top. I trimmed it slightly so it was a little bit shorter. Then with these swirls, I'm just going to glue those to each side, just with a little bit of liquid glue. And I'm just using my grid mat to kind of line it up so I make sure that they're nice and even. And then I've cut two of these rings from white cardstock and I'm just going to layer them with the gold so they're a little bit more sturdy. They're only going to be glued on one place on the card so uh, I want them to be a little more sturdy. So I'm just putting liquid glue on one side of that frame and I'm going to put it on to the pumpkin with that swirl sort of centered up in the middle. So now it looks like those swirls are the axles for the wheels. So now to work on my magic iris mechanism, I've cut three of the magic iris rings. I've cut three of the little stabilizer pieces. And then I've also cut three of the petals or the sausages from that same shimmer cardstock. And then I've cut the tab from pink. I'm going to use the flux capacitor piece here to cut the little slots in one of my rings so that I have a place to put my tabs. Now that I have those slots, I can start to assemble it. So I'm going to use my little petal pieces here, and I'll tell you right now that I actually tore this thing apart and replaced these sausage petal pieces with white cardstock a little further along in this video. So I'm using the blue ones for right now and I'm just going to kind of hold them in place with my tape. I'm sliding them in the slot and then I'm just going to line them up with the circle. But in the end I ended up trading them out for white. You'll see that in a little bit and how I salvaged things and why I did it. But for now we're going with the blue. So once I have these three in place and I'm just using my tape to hold them in place so I don't have to keep adjusting them. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Then I'm going to put a glue dot on each of those little X's. These are the mini glue dot size, the 3 16th size dots. And this is what you want to use for the magic iris. Liquid glue doesn't work and neither does big glue dots. So use the mini ones. Then I'm going to take another one of those rings I cut. I'm just going to lay it on top and line it up and it will stick to those three dots I just put on there. Now that that's stuck on with those three dots, I can remove my tape that was just temporary. And then I'm going to take a glue runner and I'm going to use those little stitching guides that the die created. And I'm going to put a line of adhesive from the inside where those stitching lines are to the outside. And then I'm going to use those guides as a guide to where to put my stabilizer pieces. You want to line up the inside curve with the inside curve of the ring and put it right between those little guidelines that it creates. Once those three stabilizer pieces are on, we're going to flip it over and we're going to put that pink tab that I cut on. So you need to put adhesive just on the bottom part that is going to attach to the ring. And then that curved area you're going to line up with the inside curve of this big white ring. And then you're going to make a little V at the bottom. So you're going to put it right at that point where that stabilizer is. And you want to put this to the right of a stabilizer. Not to the left. Only to the right works. Now you can layer on that last and final ring. And then you can put adhesive on each of these stabilizer pieces and gently fold them over onto this ring. They won't go all the way to the inside edge, but that's okay. You want to make sure that these are not too tight so that your mechanism has room to move. Once you have all these stabilizers gently folded over, they will not go all the way to the inside. Now you can test your mechanism and see if it works. And then the little tabs on the back, you can just fold in. It 
helps if you turn it the right way. <laughs> so now I'm going to layer my piece that I inked earlier with all the glitter that's dried onto a white piece of cardstock cut with the same dye. This is just to stabilize it a little bit with all the ink and the gel is warped a little bit. So this is just going to flatten it out and make this a thicker piece of cardstock and a little more sturdy. Now I'm going to work on my images. And so I've got one of the circles that the die cuts out. So this fits perfectly in that opening. I've got the little mermaid from Mermaid for You and I'm just inking up the top half of her. As you can see there, I'm leaving off her tail. I'm not inking that up. And I'm gonna stamp her in the circle. Now, as I said, this is the circle that fits inside the magic iris, but I actually ended up stamping her on a much larger circle in the ends because my iris mechanism was sort of catching on this small one. So you'll see that towards the end, but just know that what I'm doing here, I did end up changing a little bit. So I've got the top half of her stamped, and then I'm just gonna go in with a pin, draw in the belt of her dress, and then just go out from the sides like she's wearing a ball gown. I'm also stamping the little crown from Swan Soiree. And then I'm gonna stamp out the mouse from You're Just My Type. I'm stamping out two of those, cause I need two mice. And then I'm gonna stamp out the little hat from the Party Animal Holiday Set. I'm gonna keep my coloring pretty simple. I'm just going in with some yellows for her hair. I went in with a brighter yellow over that more dull one that I did just to brighten it up a little bit. And then I'll go in with a slightly darker one for a slight bit of shading. I've got a B00. I'm starting with a very light shade of blue first off on her dress. And then I'll go in with some darker ones just to add a little bit of shading and detail. I used a darker blue for the belt of her dress and just a little bit of shading there to make it look full. And then I'm going in with some E02 and E00 for her skin tones. Since you're gonna see this whole circle, I do need to color the whole background of the circle. So I'm gonna go in with a very light pink and go all over with this pink. This is gonna be sort of my base background color. And then I'm gonna go in with a slightly darker pink and outline her. Then I'll go back with the light pink again and kind of blend that out into the background. So it kind of defines her a little bit against the background. Now for my mice, I'm going to use my pen again. I'm going to alter these a little bit and give them a little shirt. So of course I watched Cinderella so that I knew what color to color Jack and Gus's shirts and hats. So Jack has a red shirt and then a darker red hat. And then of course, Gus has a yellow shirt and a green hat. This hat is of course a Santa hat and it has the little ball and the band, but I found that coloring the whole hat with the same color kind of made those details go away and they seem to work really well and still look like the hats that the mice were wearing in the movie. I'm going in with some browns to color these mice. And just doing some very simple shading. Now I'm going to go ahead and color that green hat and I did some simple shading on this too with a little bit of a darker one and then a lighter one. You can't see it too terribly much. So we're back to the iris. This is where I tore it apart 
and I'm putting it back together. So the pieces are already on there. I tore it apart and took out the blue inside pieces because I realized that was not going to work for what I wanted to do. I wanted to color what was in this opening and I did try coloring on the blue cardstock but it just looked really strange. So you can do this and you can save all those pieces and just replace the inside. I didn't have to recut anything. I just added the white petal pieces in the middle instead of the blue. And then of course you want to fold those little tabs in once it's back together. But you can also see I already had my um, little cover for the pull tab already on there and I'd already trimmed off the excess pink. So I've put some adhesive on the front of that iris. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down to my background, line up that opening. It's working great. And then I'm going to line up my opening of my coach. So you can kind of line it up from the front, but with iris open, you can actually flip it over and you can see that circle that's slightly smaller and you can line it up just a little bit better from the back. I'm not going to glue this down just yet. I'm going to close the iris. I'm holding it in place where I want the coach to be adhered. And I'm going to use my pencil to sketch out the door that I want to color. So what I'm sketching is the door and the curtains, so kind of the frame of it. And I did try this on the blue pieces that I had in the inside, but it looked kind of weird. The color was there, but it was muted because it was on the blue. It wasn't very vibrant and it looked kind of muddy. So I did try it with the blue first and realized that to really make this card look really great, I needed to replace those pieces. So I'm going in with my colors here. I've got a darker pink for my curtains. And I'm just doing some simple coloring on the sketches that I did. Sorry for my head and I kind of went off the screen a little bit. I wasn't paying attention when I was doing this quite as much. But um, I'm going to go in with a slightly darker one and sort of define the, the edges of the curtains and where they come together. And then I'll just blend it out with that lighter pink again. Then I'm going to go in with the pale pink. And these are the same colors I used when I colored the background where Cinderella is. So everything's going to look consistent when the iris opens up. Then I'm going to go in with this mustardy gold color, I guess. And I'm just going to color all around. Now, you're not going to see all of this, but I'm going to fill it in regardless. Now I've got this gold glitter gel pen, and I'm just going around the outside of that curtained opening and adding some gold glitter accents. And it's going to match the gold glitter that I have on the coach from the glitter cardstock. So when the iris opens, you're going to see white where I have it colored. So what I'm doing is I'm just working around opening and closing the iris to see what the white is and I'm going to color that with the markers so that it's all colored and it's not as obvious that it's open up. This is just me being really picky. You don't have to do this. But I feel like that white is very stark when it opens up and kind of takes away from the magic of the iris itself because it just kind of like really catches your eye. So I'm just working this around and I'm just using the colors that are adjacent to the white parts. So it's not really making a picture as it opens, but the light pink is near the light pink and the dark pink is near the dark pink. And then the gold color will be where the gold is. So now that I've got my pinks in there, I'll finish off with the gold make sure all that that white is covered up and then I'm also going to go in with that same gold glitter gel pen and just extend the lines of that frame so that they're continuous as well. And you can see that that looks so much better than that stark white. So I'm putting some adhesive on the little stabilizer pieces on my magic iris ring on the back. I've also put some foam adhesive on each side and a couple small pieces in the corners. 
I'm making sure that I stay clear of that handle that needs to move at the top because you don't want to put any foam adhesive in the way of that so that it can move freely. And then I've got a pink card base that I'm going to mount this to. So I'm just centering that up so I have a nice pink mat all the way around. And then it also matches the little arrow on my pull tab. So you can see I need to fill that opening with Cinderella. And that's where the circle comes in. So it's going to fit in that hole perfectly. You're just going to have to kind of work with it and get it underneath all those layers. My problem was once I got her in there and I started working with the iris, the little tabs were actually getting caught on my circle slightly. And I don't know why exactly, because I haven't had this problem in the past, but I'll show you how I fixed it in this case. And it did require pulling my background off my card. Um, but I saved it. I managed to save it. So I'm using my little poker tool here to make sure that's down below all those pieces. I've put some foam squares on my carriage here so that it can pop up off the background a little bit and have some more dimension. It'll also make her look like she's sitting back in the carriage a little bit more because she's deep in that opening. So you can see when I try to close it, it doesn't want to close all the way. I have a little bit of a hole in the middle. And it did take me a little while to figure out what's happening, but it was the circle that was the problem. So I went ahead and glued her crown on, and then I'm going to put the hats on the little mice. I fussy cut the little mice out so that I didn't have a white border around them. I just thought that it looked better with the seam for them to not have that white border. I'm just going to use some liquid glue to adhere them down, um, and I decided to put them on the right side. This is me just figuring out where exactly I wanted them. And of course, since I fussy cut them out, I cut off their tails, and then I'll just draw that back in with a pin once I get them where I want them to be. So now that they're in place, I'm just going to go in with a black pin and draw in their tails. So here is where I pulled things apart. So that little circle was causing some issues, but I managed to get all this off that card base. So the circle was catching the little tabs that are folded in, and I'm not sure why. I haven't had this problem in the past, but I cut a bigger circle so that now it has space to move and there's not an edge for those to catch on. But I'm gonna use the circle that I colored earlier as my guide for stamping Cinderella again. So I'm going to actually do some masking on this one so the crown doesn't have to be separate. So I've stamped that crown and I've cut out a little mask out of a post-it. I'm also using the post-it as a mask for the bottom half of the mermaid so I don't have to worry about my inking as much. And then I can remove those masks and I'll just draw in her skirt with a pin like I did before. So I'm just going to draw it nice and long. Obviously, this is going to kind of go off the page. I'm not going to have to color this whole thing because this circle is definitely going to get covered up by the background. So I'm doing the same coloring as I did the first time, um, using the same colors that I did the first time. But you can see that I'm just stopping the color before the edge because you're not going to see any of this. I'm adding a little bit more adhesive to those stabilizers from before since I pulled all the pieces off just to make sure they're nice and sticky. And I'm gonna line her up. And now she fits in that opening perfectly. And I don't have the little circle for the tabs to catch on. And now it closes all the way. So now my curtains line up. They weren't lining up before when it didn't close. So now I've just got another pink card base and I've added that foam adhesive again and I can line it up like I did before now that things are working a little bit better. And 
now I have this perfect card with Cinderella. So I decided to add a couple more gold details. I cut some of those other swirly tendrils from the pumpkin die set. I'm just going to add those to the top. I just felt like it just needed slightly a little bit more decoration. So I like how this one's going to kind of hang over. And then this one's going to be more in the background. And I actually cut this one from the back side of the paper too, just so that the swirl went the other direction. So here is my finished card. And you open it up and you see Cinderella inside. I just love how it turned out. Um, it's just like it was in my head. It turned out perfect. And I'm so happy with it. So I hope you enjoyed this video showing how I made this card. Here's a couple more shots of this card as it opens up and reveals Cinderella inside. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.